Hi everyone, welcome to Go Sci-Fi. My name is Alex Doe. In this episode, we will explore scope, which could be easy to understand, but could be extremely confusing in some languages, like JavaScript. This is an important concept that needs to be understood correctly to avoid countless time spent on debugging. Let's start with the basics. First, let's define scope. Scope refers to the section of program that a variable name can be relied upon to label the same unit of storage. What do we mean by the section of param? The simplest definition is some unit of code that is marked out in the param's text like block of text in between the braces or function or module. This corresponds to the most common definition of scope, the lexical scope. Here is a block of code in Python. You can see at first, x was not bound to any value. Once x is declared and assigned a value of 10, it is bound to that unit of storage until this section of code exits. Since this is a global scope, this variable will be out of scope until the program exits. Hold on, you just mentioned global scope. What does it mean? In most scripting language, every variable that you define for use throughout the program is in global scope. The variables in global scope are usually accessible everywhere, and they are possible to be modified at some points in the entire life of your program, unless you make them constant. Here's a simple Python code. Let's not talk much about functions in this clip. We will discuss function in the next video. On the first line, we declare a variable x and assign a value of 100 to it. Since this line does not belong to any block of code, x is global by default. It means that any block of code can read x value. When you declare a function, like some func in this case, it will create a smaller scope when the function some func is invoked, as on the line 10. As you can see, we declare a local variable y in this function and assign a value of 10 to it. On the seventh line, we print out the value of x. Since x is accessible in the scope, it brings out 100 in the output. Similarly, it brings out the value of y in the output because y is, of course, available in this function scope. Once this block code exists on the line 8, y will go away as some fun goes out of scope. Now, only x is still accessible on the 11 line. As you can see briefly on the example above, y was a local variable. Why exactly is local variable? Local variables are confined in the scope to the block of code that declares them. So what will happen when we have a global variable and a local variable that share the same name? I'm glad that you asked. Well, the local variable will not share the same value with the global one, and it has nothing to do with the global variable. The local variable will have more priority in the local context. To make it easier to understand, think of global scope as a public place. You can have access to anything outside of your house, let's say a bench in the park. Anyone can sit there. Now think of an apartment you share with your friends as a local scope. A random stranger cannot access to your apartment, but they can use the bench outside of your apartment and all objects inside your apartments are local to you and your roommates, like the sofa in the living room of the apartment. We can even have a smaller scope inside your apartment scope. Everyone in your apartment has their own room, like their own scope. You can't access to Peter's objects inside his room, since they are local to his room, and he is the only one that can use them. Similarly, he can't use your objects inside your room. Now, let's say your dorm has a shared Bluetooth music player, and anyone can change the playlist. You can hear the music inside your local scope, and Peter can also hear the music inside his room. Due to its global context, anyone can modify the playlist. From your room, you can change the playlist to your favorite one, and Peter can hear your music from his room. As he doesn't like your taste of music, he can then change to his old songs, and everyone can hear his terrible voice. Anyway, this is one of the reasons why you shouldn't use global variables, as everyone 
can read and modify the values from their own scope, and they can lead to very buggy code. But how can we share data between the scopes? What if we would like to share the same playlist? Then you should pass the data as parameters to the functions instead of declaring global variables. For example, you can knock on Peter's door and give him the playlist to play on his own room. Besides the reason above, global variables can waste memory. Do you remember that global variables will exist until your program terminates? It means that the global variables would take a chunk of memory throughout the entire life of your program, while local variables only exist until a function or a method exists. Therefore, we should keep variables to local scope to avoid spending unnecessary memory. So we have learned a bit about scopes. This is relevant to most programming languages. However, some languages like JavaScript have more complicated scope and context. We will explore those in the next video. I hope this video is helpful to you. Thank you for listening.